What's up, y'all? Real Cold Burnout here. Thanks for joining me back at my channel. And if you're here, you can just call me Cobra. Oh, yeah. So, here's my Stratego collection. And this actually was requested. This is a special request from a couple of YouTubers here. Douglas Walther and Black Jeep JK requested to see my collection. And I actually haven't uh, busted out my collection in a while because I bought most of these about 10 years ago and, you know, financial reasons or whatever. Not that these were expensive, but it was like one of those things like, how many of these am I going to buy? Now that I've got them out, there's a few I, I want to look for nowadays. So, I don't know how many of you out there played Stratego growing up. This is still a game that's available on the shelves today. It's history. Uh, it, the first ones came out. Uh, it's World War II era as far as the Stratego format. It's based on a game even older than that. And that's about as far as my knowledge goes because, you know, as a collector, I would say I'm more of a superficial collector. I just like the the physical owning of the boards type of thing so sit back with me I'm gonna uh, highlight some of my boards here kinda go through all everything I have I do have a special one over here that I probably can't show in this video for political reasons that's right there's some variants that that are not politically correct today <laughs> which is even though it's historical well, maybe you can see it over there I'll put that on my alternate channel um, you, you can go check that out if you want I'm going to focus on my favorites, and that is the older versions. And we'll start with this one right here. Oops, sorry, bumped the camera there. All right. So this is one of my favorites right here. 1959 version. Now, that's at least what the copyright says on it. I did get this one, like I said, about 10 years ago, if I remember correctly. You know, my mind ain't what it used to be. But that's the copyright version there, 1959. Uh, Chieftain Products Incorporated. This one's made in Canada, so it does have, you do have English and you do have, that's probably French Canadian right there. But this was as close as I could get at the time, looking on eBay, to one of the original, quote, jumbo versions that was available in the UK. And this is, <laughs> this is one of my favorites that I'm, I'm grateful I found this. Now, nothing here. Well, most of these I found for under $20 back in the day, uh, with a few exceptions, maybe. But this was a great eBay, eBay find. EB, eBay find because it has the rule book with it printed out there. And here's what I like about this one. Again, 1959, but check this board out. Look at that. That's pretty freaking cool. I mean, that's someone probably hand painted a board and then it was just reproduced. All right, so this version is a little bit different as far as like because the pieces. I'm trying not to damage my board. This thing's freaking old. This is what I love about the pieces. I mean, look at that there. Hopefully, it's showing up okay in my lighting. It looks like a freaking castle, right? Uh, the pieces themselves have just the picture of what they are, so there's no numbering system on the pieces. So you kind of uh, have to know the rules and what is what. Here's you know the rule tells you how many of each you have type of thing. But it's a basic capture of the flag game, and I just love these pieces. So to find this on eBay back then, they um, I don't know if you can find these now. I would probably uh, search Jumbo uh, and see if you can find a version because I know there's other versions that were out in the UK made by Jumbo back in the day but complete set there. Freaking love it. We'll move on so we don't spend too much time. 1959 and any of my dates I'm quoting I'm quoting off of uh, the copyright that's on the box so I welcome any, if there's someone out there that knows more about the Stratego history, uh, go ahead and put your comments down below. I welcome them. Uh, share that knowledge with everybody, please. 
So, <laughs> love that one. How am I going to do this? <laughs> we'll set this one over here for now. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have got this out. I don't want to get anything spilled on the boards, right? But it is. I'm filming this on St. Patrick's Day. I did just uh, listen to a great uh, blog radio show from Ms. Bomey. Uh, it's on the John Solar 283 blog radio podcast or blog radio show, and I think it's also podcasts, all that stuff. Jerry was on there. Blue Tunda. It was a great show. All right. This is another one of mine that's uh, so 59, 1959. This one here. Now, on the copyright, on the box, it's going to say. I think it says 19, actually, when you open the box and you flip it over, the instructions are now here. This is an American version when it was brought over. Milton Bradley Company. It does say 1960 is the U.S. Patent Office, so that's when they patented here in the U.S. 1961 by the Milton Bradley Company. I love the instructions in the box lid. That is phenomenal because you're probably going to keep the, up with the box lid more than you keep up with an instruction box pamphlet so I love that that's a very smart move so what that say 1961 but I believe this is actually 1970 and the reason why I say that is this insert here now again I bought most of these off of eBay back in the day so if anyone has something different let me know and this copyright says 1970 Milton Bradley on this insert and this is just a be careful with these old boxes this is just a kind of a space holder, right? Because you have a board, which is weird. Because look how look how the board doesn't uh, is not uh, the same size, and you can actually see this box is blown out a little bit here. I probably should just go ahead and tape it there. It does have all the pieces now? This is these version. This version of the pieces carried on for probably a couple decades you do have that castled look but it's not that round castle and you have a numbering system along with the picture which I love this is the type style of pieces that I grew up with and you have two trays these trays you pull them out you can pull them out there's a plastic insert inside there and so that's your tray of pieces here's what this board looks like I like this board as well. So here you go, <laughs> Americanized. Now compare that to, ah, for fun, let's compare that to this one. This is why boxes get blown out, because you got to dig your finger in there to get that box out, or to get the board out, right? Now just look at the difference in artwork. This looks painted. If this is painted, maybe it almost looks like a computer graphic drawing, but it may be, you know, a, a painted artwork. It does kind of remind me of of some of the cartoons of the time, so maybe it's just the style of painting. But I mean, this just looks better, in my opinion, as far as the trees and stuff like that. So that's just a comparison there. Just to take up a little more time. Sorry about that, but I love I love this the artwork involved in the older games. So what's nice about this? I like the the layout of it, right? I like the how the I mean, there's a lot of detail in in your pictures down here that represent what soldiers you have, type of thing. They're even labeled. They got the numbering system going, so you know what's what on your board. And you know that's a pretty, pretty basic uh, look at it. There, love it. I, I'm thinking they probably made the board this size instead of narrowing it down to this this length, just to fit some kind of type of gaming conven convention of like. A board game has to fit in this box. They probably had these boxes. Milton Bradley did, and it's like, what do you stuff in this box for a game? That's just my thought on it. You know, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right. Who knows? 
Okay, let's get into these. Actually, I got these a little bit out of order. This one I showed. This is my Goodwill find. Here's the one I had from back in the day. So we move up into... Oh, I didn't have them out of order. Dummy. What am I doing? Oh, I've lost it. So next iteration for Milton Bradley in Stratego is this one here. And you got the <laughs> highly decorated, who is this guy? You know, a general, who knows what the heck he is. Marshall, I don't know what they called him back in the day. But look at the board size. Now the board completely fills the box. Same pieces, basically. Same insert with the same 1970 uh, copyright on it. However, from my research, this board actually came out around 1977. Okay, so 1977 for this version is what I'm going with. And here's what the board looks like now. So they took advantage of all that space in the box. They made the board a little bit bigger. And the pieces are the same size, so you just have a little more room to drop them in. Let's compare it. Now, what they lost here, they lost all the pictures that I love from the older version, or previous version. Okay, this, <laughs> this is very similar. It's not the same. Wow, maybe it is the same. Let's, did they just inverse it? That's the first time I'm noticing that. You have red and blue right so the way we would play it is you know you'd flip this around behind your back somebody would whatever side it landed on you were the red team or the blue team type of thing but what I'm noticing is that is the same battlefield just blown up lar enlarged and just to be sneaky they flipped red with blue so they flipped it uh, Okay, now what they lost is some character, I would say. They lost all this down here. I really miss just having the different players or soldiers, I guess you would say, that you have available to you and to include the bombs. You know, they, they lost that, that factor here, which is interesting considering the board is wider. I guess when they widened it, they couldn't make it any longer because it wouldn't fit the box, and so there you go. Uh, flip these pieces out. Nice little comparison from the previous generation. Now, what I do like is again, instructions are in the box still. That's the way it should be. If you can put them in here, that's this how simple this, this game is. Simple enough for what they call a 10-year-old to learn. Complex enough in your strategies for adults to continue to play. And this, in my previous video, I thought my older brother had this version, which I think he does. But I think we actually started... Because it was him and my cousin had the boards, as far as I remember. I was the young youth, I don't know how old I was, up and learning. And uh, every once in a while I'd win a game back then, but not like nowadays. We're, you know, pretty much undefeated for like the last decade. There it is, there's that one. 1977 version. Then we move into this one, which I've shown before. And let's see, do they start putting the, I think they start putting the copyright out here, yeah. 1986. <laughs> that was a pretty good run with, with this version. 1986, so I've changed the outside of the box. And it's always had that European uh, theme because, and that makes sense because, you know, it originated over there in Europe in the, 1900s 
early 1900s as another game. I can't pronounce it. I, I think it might have been a French name. And was reinvented, so to speak, a little bit differently around the World War II time frame. And then finally made its way over to the U.S. So that's why these... <laughs> These military figures are themed that way, in that style. And of course, I won't be able to get that stand up very well. My apologies for the uh, lighting and stuff. I'm just over here in the storage area of the basement to have some room. Here's the board. I like this board. I really do. So they've, they've changed the, the artwork inside of here. A little bit of a, a kind of throwback to how it used to be as far as how the artwork is done. Not quite as nice as this old 1959 one that I have. But check this out down here. So now you have a proper, at least, representation of all your soldiers. You know, you don't have the bomb, you don't have the flag represented. But it's nice to see them and some artwork put into it, some effort put into that. I like this board. Why do I keep putting the box top on the previous one when I'm going to compare it? Let's compare it to the previous board. There's your comparison. So yeah, at this point I like this board better than this board as far as the artwork and stuff like that. You do have this little boxed area, just, I mean, this these little ponds here, you couldn't move your pieces into, and that's evidence, evident by the lines, but it is kind of boxed off here, like, yeah, that, that's a no-go. That may be a little unnecessary, but it doesn't bother me too much. It's kind of a neat design. They do put a, a nice border around it. Yeah, I may bore some people with <laughs> just getting into the artwork of a game board. <laughs> here, I mean... Look at the bordering, and compared to this bordering, they kind of phoned it in on this one. Ah, here we go. 1977. You won't be able to see this on camera, probably. I can't even see what the camera's focusing on. But 1977, so the board itself, that's where the 77 comes from. On the board, that's a... How long have I had these and I haven't noticed? <laughs> so that's good to notice. Does this one have a copyright on the board itself? Let's take a look. Yes. Okay. So right here, 1986 is the copyright. Uh, Milton Bradley under Barn and Universal Copyright Conventions. Made in USA. Okay. 86 board. I, I dig it. Again, the piece is basically the same. I don't know why this tray is upside down. Oh, here, here is uh, the foul on, on the 86 board. They stopped putting the instructions in here. <laughs> now, they store the instructions under here. There we go. <laughs> what is this? I haven't seen this in a while. This so this is my personal board from way back in the day. And uh, yeah, I don't know how many games we played, but apparently out of all these games, oh, this is from 92. Start date 91992. <laughs> from 1992. I won four games compared to my older brother, two, and then my cousin, two. Then we have, in 94, we, we tried again. Again, I won. Uh, 95, sorry, apparently I won. Again, so. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, they went back to, I don't know if they want me showing... And we've got our full names there for some reason. Um, they went back to this style of instructions, which 
And this was nice because it shows you how you can move. There's no diagonal moves. Uh, it has a layout of how many people you have, your soldiers, all that stuff, how to set up. So it's a pretty concise instruction book, has a few strategy hints, rules of rank, winning the game. So I think they added enough to it where they thought they couldn't put it on the back of the box. But I think they probably could have still fit this on the back of the box. Because what do we have here? Well, maybe. The font would have been smaller. But you could have got most of it on there, and I think you could have. I think they could have still got it on the back of the box. They may have moved on to we're gonna. That costs money to print on a box now. Pull it off of a line. Going back to this style of instructions. Okay, finally get to utilize that empty space underneath this spacer. 1986, right there. I should have been comparing these spacers. We'll do one comparison. Uh, I was using that old style family. Okay. So that's my original board from way back in the day as soon as I could buy it. This is my Goodwill board. Same exact as that. I did have to tape up a few corners, but really intact as far as the innards. Did it have the instruction booklet? I don't think it did. No, that was the only thing it was missing was the instruction booklet. You know, nowadays you might be able to reprint one, right? So our printing capacity is really great nowadays. All right, so those, there's like the main core of my boards. I'll put them to the back. Be careful on how I stack boards. We'll save this one for in a bit. I'll grab a drink. Nostalgia boards. So, when was this one made? Now Milton Bradley says ages 8 to adult, whenever this one came out. When did this one come out? Two thousand two is the copyright on this. So nostalgia board in two thousand two. Milton Bradley saying ages eight and up now. Shows you how kids have progressed, or at least the thought process behind the children. This one, oh wow, dust got inside there. So you do have a little bit of write up on the inside of the box. You can see my box is cracked and messed up because the flaw on these boards, right here, it popped up to a point where I couldn't get the board out. I wrote um, Milton Bradley asking if I could buy another box. They said no, they don't sell boxes. They didn't care that my box had broke or the problems. I can't believe this is so dusty. Let me dust this off real quick. So now you have a board that's folded. It's, qu it's quartered. <laughs> but check that out. That nostalgia board from the 60s and early 70s style you got your your pieces down here this actually doesn't look like that So that's cool, kind of a bit, a bit of nostalgia there as far as the board, 
once you unfold it. The trays. I haven't. <laughs> this is all shifted. My apologies. I have not uh, messed with these things since. Why is this all shifted down like that? These these are out of order. I'll have to put them in order later. I haven't messed with these since I've moved. Honestly, I haven't opened this one. I don't know how long. So the trays, <laughs> pretty cool design. They're cheap plastic, but you lift them out, and it allows you to look at your pieces when you're setting them up, and the other person can't see your pieces, whereas before, we would always take our pieces out of the trays and kind of line them up so no one could see. Because that's the name of the game. They don't know what your pieces are on the other side of the board. And it has... A nice laminated instruction booklet. Very similar to the other one, just a little bit different uh, layout. Does have some uh, there's a proof of purchase there. And what good that's for. So that's a, a cool board. It's a fail in the uh, box, uh, in my opinion. I hate this wood box. I do not like it. I don't, like the, I don't like the way the board folds up because no matter how you fold it, it's always popped up. This is the way it's supposed to fold. It's always popped up. It's supposed to lay in there like that. So now I have a broken box. Stupid. Stupid design. <laughs> that leads me to, to these that I never opened. Target only. Got this on clearance for 10 bucks. I think these were like $20 or so. This was the series that Milton Bradley was trying to do where it looked like a, a bunch of books. So you'd, you would have all these. If anyone got all these games that they were doing as these book covers, that would be pretty freaking cool. Because you, if you had them on a bookshelf, that's cool. The reason why I never opened it because my fear was it's going to be just like this where you have a board that pops up and the first time you try to put it back together you can't get your your top piece out slid out and you got to break it kind of a nostalgia board here and very similar to this one uh, yeah. you can find one cheap and grab it Stratego 50th Anniversary Edition, only available at Toys R Us. Again, I did not open it. I did not open it. This one is in a tin, so um, it wouldn't have had this slide-out problem that this wood one does. I, and now, again, it's still its age is eaten up. But I just never uh, opened it. Why, why does it say Spin Master? I don't know what that means. This has storage bags for the pieces instead of trays, which is interesting. Classic metallic painted plain pieces, so they look kind of similar to the old school style. So you have this nice style here that you had uh, in this 86 version, is what it looks like to me. Is there anything else special in here? Not that I see. I had read somewhere that there was two uh, bonus pieces that you could use. I don't see it on the back here, and I never opened this up. Should I open this up? <laughs> Vote down below. Because I might just do it. I mean, how much is this thing worth? It's probably worth about uh, $30 to $40 wrapped, I think nowadays hmm. let me know if you have one of these that's opened up if there's anything special in there 
Now we get into the uh, more modern Stratigos. Now this is still older. Ages 8 and up. When was this made? This is a uh, Star Wars variant. I'm going to show you something that I did to it. I can hear the pieces rattling around because it is not the same as it used to be as far as how the pieces go. What is this? Oh, wow. That's freaking fantastic. I'm not going to show all this, but... Boy, I just got hit in the fills. Last time I had this open, I was at my uh, parents' house on leave. And this is years and years and years ago. And I guess my mother had given me this little birthday reminder thing. You could write people's birthdays in there. And it's her handwriting. And she has since passed on uh, due to cancer. And this is freaking killing me here. Good grief. I'm so glad of this video. I did not know this was in there. I'd forgot. I must have put it in there. I don't even remember getting this. It's like some type of handmade thing. Eh, it looks like it might have been bought though. She was always into these crafty things like this and dang. Miss you, mom. Alright, I'm a, I'm a, it's got magnets on it. This is going I'm gonna get this out, use that. Dang. Wow. So, <laughs> I think I bought this when I was in my hometown on leave way back in the day when I was active duty military. And Star Wars, what, when did this come out? 2002. Alright, is the copyright. 2002. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man, those, those are good times back then. You can see I, the sticker sheet I did not use. Why? Because the most powerful characters, the numbering system is backwards to what I learned. I, I think I may have mentioned that at the beginning of the video, but here in the U.S. when the Stratego came over, I don't know how it was before, our numbering system became the number one was the most powerful. Number two was the next powerful, and so forth. Later on, in the newer versions, around the 2000 time period, apparently, they reversed the number ordering. So if you grew up with the old numbering system, the new boards completely mess you up. So, you, you know, that's why these I started buying these, like, vintage and, you know, throwback versions. So I never used a sticker, and I remember doing this. What I did, you can see I have stickers here. I use my mother's uh, computer, scan this in, and I don't know what program I use. It's probably just a, I imagine it was just paint or something. I changed the numbers, printed off a sticker sheet, and I remember relabeling these there so that they would match uh, my numbering convention that I grew up with. So, let's look at the board. <laughs> We gotta, it's been so long since I opened this one up because I never play this one. Again, this is why your boxes get blown out. How hard is this? Alright, it's a full board. I'm sitting here trying to dig it out. It's a full board where you just open it like this. So, this is pretty cool. This is actually pretty cool. I don't remember it being like this. You know, good side, bad side, whatever. You do have your characters down here. What's cool about this, seeing as how I renumbered mine, scanned them in and renumbered, they're not numbered down here on the board. So that works out perfect uh, for playing the game the way I grew up with. And you got asteroids here for your spaces that you can't go to. There's a Death Star up here for the bad guys. You know, whatever. It's a game. Don't get too involved in good and bad, but have fun. If you're a Star Wars fan and you can find one of these, grab it, play it. Um, if you want the old numbering system, do it. If I did it back in 2002 or whenever I bought this, scan this in, change the numbers real easy, probably nowadays, and paint, print it off on a sticker sheet like I did. Let me grab another one. 
Hans, or who is this? Oh no, that's Anakin. <laughs> I would grab him. Mm, pieces are all jumbled up. Keep grabbing bombs. Anyway, you know, make it work for you. Pretty cool. I don't know. If you see one of these, grab it. 2002 variant. <laughs> That's interesting. Wow. Such a huge box for no reason. And by huge, I mean thick. Why is it this tall? Well, I guess they're trying to make these easier to grab and they put Star Wars on them, but uh, you know, why is it that tall? Maybe that, I mean, that sticker fell off of that one, I don't know. But the failure for the new versions were, for me, were it just didn't fit my numbering system but there it is and listen that you hear that rattling around it's crazy that's why they're all intermixed and and stuff like that Star Wars version alright so knockoffs here's one called Battlefield uh, priced right at two dollars and ninety nine cents I don't see any copyright dates on this I know I bought this, I think, in the 90s sometime, thinking I would use it on a trip. I don't think I actually ever used it. I don't know why. The numbering system looked a little weird to me on the decals. That may be why. When I opened it, I was like, back, back in the early 90s, I was like, how do I fix this? I'm pretty sure that's why. Here it is, a, a freaking slide off kind of like that. Dang, I'm probably going to tear this thing up trying to get it apart. Yeah, I never even put this together. Yeah, that's why. The knock off the numberings on the uh, fig on the uh, soldiers and stuff like that is all wrong for me. So I never put this together. How do you even get this? Oh, weird. Oh, this would be such a cool game now. Again. What I might do is scan these in and change the numbers because that's pretty cool. Now down in here the numbering system is off. So that's kind of a bummer unless I can get into that. I probably won't even mess with it. But knockoffs. This would have kind of been fun. Uh, it's got a it's got an extra row, is what it looks like. The rows are not uh, accurate to the original game. They probably had to do that because it's a knockoff. So I can see why they did that. But I wish there had been a legitimate Stratego. If anyone knows of a legitimate travel Stratego, because this has a lot of potential, it just kind of falls short on the numbering because it's a knockoff that I bought sometime in the 90s. So all I remember and I even get it back together. Time for this crap. Kind of a would have been a cool game if it was a legitimate one. All right, so if you stuck around this long, I'll give you a, a quick. Uh, well, I'll just uh, maybe do this part of it. So I do have a Civil War version of, of Stratego that if I put it up here because, oh, the, the, uh, the flag of the South will probably get this video banned, so I'm going to show that in the, on my other channel. But there are different variants, like specialties of this game that come along. Do you have Stratego boards? Let me see your Stratego boards. Put your links down below if you want to do a VR, if you have one. Even if it's one of these that I have, let's see them. <laughs> let's have some fun with this. If you stuck around for this uh, insanely long video, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, 
love this game. It's a good game. I need to start, you know, I need to train my kids up, train my kids. I need to see if I can get my kids excited about it. I don't know if they will be. I've got to try to start them on the old boards so they don't learn the new stuff. That's what kills me. All right. Boom.